welcome back in this lecture i will start discussion on polymer additives and blends and in this particular lecture i will talk about polymer additives additives poly of polymers are very important and why should you care about that because 95 percent more than 95 percent of the volumes of thermoplastics would be useless without stabilization. For example, pure polyolefins like polyethylene and polypropylenes oxidize very rapidly. So, we require antioxidants to be added in these samples to be useful. Similarly, pure polyphenyl chloride or PVC cannot be extruded or molded because of poor thermal, thermal stability. So, we require to add thermal stabilizer or to PVC to have a effective processing. So, the application of polymeric materials is substantially attributed to the incorporation of additives into the original resin. Additives enable in overcoming processing difficulties, performance limitations and limited environmental stability. So, we, we add actually additive to overcome these limitations as described here and I will describe more about these limitations little later. Now, the nature of additives to be used in a given polymer system depends on various factors like chemical composition of the polymer, processing condition and its target application. The, when you talk about uh, stabilizer, the mechanism of degradation of a polymer need to be understood when the polymer is subject to heat, light, shear or moisture during its manufacturing and entire life cycle. So, we need to understand how polymer degrade during processing or during its use in for a for a outdoor application or some other application. So, unless we do not understand the mechanism of degradation, we will not be able to identify or design additives to prevent this degradation. For example, presence of a carbon hydrogen bond or a carbon chlorine bond in chain growth polymers like polyolefin, polystyrene and polyvinyl chloride make them prone to degradation by variety of environmental agents. Hence, these polymers generally require protection against oxidation, light, thermal degradation etcetera as I just discussed uh, now. There are some issues to be considered when we design or add additives to polymer samples. How do they function? What uh, is the cost of the additives? Proper amount of loading need to be added so that it actually does it function, it does not deteriorate the function of the base polymer. How, it, how the additives interact uh, are interacting with the plus base polymer material that to be understood. Interaction with other additives, if there are multiple additives then how the multiple additives interact with each other that need to be understood as well. Long term issue, how the presence of these additives actually affect the base polymer properties in long term like its function, longevity, environmental aspect and so on. How can you handle the additives and how good they mix with the base plastics. As I said there are different types of um, role if additives can play and accordingly we add additives to the base material. For example, protective additives, these additives generally prevent or delay or influence the aging or degradation behavior of the base polymer. And some examples are given light stabilizer with act against light exposure antioxidants which basically prevent oxidative degradation, heat stabilizers which actually prevent or slow down the heat related degradation especially during processing. Similarly, antimicrobials which basically protect the polymer 
from microbial attack and and so on. So, what I will do in this lecture it is not possible for me to give example and discuss the mechanism of these additives and the function of these additives all these additives that is not possible and uh, that will require many lectures uh, and which is also not required for this introduction introductory course as well. So, what I decided I will talk about one example for each case. So, in this case let me discuss about light stabilizers. Now, light stabilizer actually require when the polymers is prone to deteriorates its property in the influence of light. For example, photo degradation of polystyrene if we keep polystyrene under light for long duration it turns yellow it becomes brittle and it this degradation of properties become fast in outdoor applications because outdoor is where this light the contact of light or um, is actually more prominent and that happens because of the ring oxidation of this uh, uh, aromatic ring and and the mechanism of oxidation is shown here. You can see uh, in more detail later uh, when you spend time on these slides. So, we need to add additives which will prevent this ring oxidation or actually we can protect the polymer from exposure of this harmful light. Now, remember when you talk about light, the light will have different uh, electromagnetic radiation and obviously, for example, if you compare between a UV light and visible light, UV light will have a higher energy. So, UV light will have more prominent effect in degradation of polymer samples than a visible light. So, if you want to protect this polymer sample, if we can somehow protect the exposure to UV light, then it will be easier for us to stop or prevent or retard this degradation. Similarly, polycarbonate the structure is shown here it becomes uh, yellow hazy and brittle after about say one hour one year to one and a half years exposure in outdoor and that happens because of heat in light induced freeze rearrangement or fries rearrangement. So, basically uh, there is a organic rearrangement reaction named uh, as uh, so, this is Fry's rearrangement that happens in presence of light and as a result the sample becomes yellow and you get lot of colored product and this path A is driven by light which is less than 300 nanometer. So, basically it is done mostly by the UV light and path B leads to photo oxidation products. So, Somehow, if we can stop these reactions, then we probably will be able to protect the polycarbonate from photo degradation. How is it done? It is done by adding additives and we call those are light stabilizers. So, it is an additive which to reduce the or eliminate the reaction caused by visible or UV light radiation. And most engineering plastics typically contains an aromatic groups which has intense UV absorption around 290 and that is the reason for most uh, that is the most dominating factor for this degradation because that has higher energy. And as I said that exposure to light generally result in yielding in polymer. So, different types of light stabilizer are available in the markets and they are UV absorbers. UVAs and they actually absorb and effectively screen UV light. Hindered amine light stabil stabilizer or HALS HALS they arrest chemical chain reaction resulting from free radicals. Also they are that is why they are called free radical scavengers and we can add both together to have a synergistic benefit in uh, engineering plastics. Some of the examples are given here organic light stabilizers this is a commercial name and this is the compound type. So, this is benzophenone dimolecule, this is benzotriazole and this is cyanoacrylate 
um, containing um, molecules and this actually uh, stop um, or prevent UV light absorption by excited state, state proton transfer. So, in this case the, the normal form get excited by absorbing the light and then at in excited state it actually undergo a excited state intramolecular proton transfer as is shown here and then it comes back to the normal form by radiation less pathway and reverse proton transfer. So, by doing this it can actually prevent the engineering polymers from degrade getting degradation. Similarly, the HALS they actually stop this uh, radicals for doing oxidative reaction. So, that is why they are called these uh, um, radical scavengers and some of the commercial uh, HALS uh, are shown the examples are shown here then this is the commercial name of, name of this particular stabilizers. There are some inorganic stabilizers can be added to um, prevent photo degradations like carbon black TiO2 and uh, ZNO and they are uh, basically very effective in nature. But remember if we want the polymer or plus material to be you know in the application which is transparent or clear application then we cannot add this type of inorganic life stabi uh, stabilizer because when you add this carbon black TiO2 or ZNO the invariably the transparency comes down. There are other types of additives uh, we just discussed about the um, stabilizers. Now, I will move to the other types of additives which enhance performance. So, basically it enhance the performance of the base polymer. For example, flame retardants it, these actually improve the flame retard, flame performance. So, basically the flammability of a polymer actually becomes lower as we add these flame retardants to the base polymer. Similarly, we can add impact modifier which will increase the impact resistance of the base polymer optical brightener which actually increases the brightness of the base polymer and obviously pigments colorant are added for aesthetic issue plasticizers can be added to decrease the TG and increase the ease of processing of the base polymer. Similarly, the other reinforcement and coupling reagents can be added to improve the performance of the base polymer. So, as I discussed earlier case as well, I will just talk about one example in little, little detail. I will skip the discussion on others because uh, it is not possible for me to discuss all the, uh, how does all these uh, additives work. So, let me discuss about flame retardants. So, flame retardants are chemical used to retard ignition and burning of plastics by interfering with the chemistry and or physics of the combustion process. So, when you burn a plastics or polymer the combustion process happen and somehow by adding this efforts this actually retard the ignition and burning of the plastic materials. Now, these effort additives enable plastic to meet various safety fire safety and performance standard imposed by several regulatory authority and without this basically this plastics material cannot be used in many applications indoor applications or in transport and so on. So, this, the factors we, we need to consider is this polymer igni, ignistability, rate of flame spreading, rate of heat release, formation of smoke and toxic gases all, all of this we need to consider. And as a result, there is no universal effort additive for a uh, for different sample. It basically depends on the type of application and depend on type of base polymer we are uh, thinking to uh, thinking. Highly aromatic polymers and halogen containing polymers are inherently better fire retardant. The mechanism how this fire tendency occurs are by different possible mechanisms. One 
is by absorbing heat by release of water. So, additives actually release water and as a result the heat is released, uh, heat is absorbed which prevents uh, um, the uh, ignibility of the material forming an insulating char and thereby preventing further burning of the substrate which basically start the fire which basically stop giving fuel to the fires if we have insulating char on the polymer sample. There is possibility that it can interfere with the chemical reactions that maintain the fire and promote the spread of fire. So, basically it can stop or it can prevent the chemical reaction which maintain the fire and promotes the spreading of flame. For example, ammonium trihydrate is released as water at around 200 degree centigrade which inhibits combustion. There are other additives which actually improve the charring in charring basically they increase the amount of char on burning on the substrate as a result as we as I discussed that it prevents the polymers come in contact with the fire. So, basically fire will be starved of any further fuel and it will diminish. And the examples are phosphorus flame retardants like phosphate esters and they are very useful in uh, this type of um, polymer materials. So, the phosphate uh, flame retardant work by promoting char formation on the substrate. Similarly, this brominated aromatics uh, emits HBr which uh, during decomposition which uh, interfere with the chemical reaction which uh, maintain the fire. Halogenated compounds also work that way and they works better for this type of polymers like nylons, polyesters, styrenics and polyolefins. How we quantify the flammability of polymers? There are two different types of uh, uh, testing. One is by uh, generally done for the products by and done for actual applications and those are mandated by UL uh, standards. So, there are very you know different uh, uh, protocols are there which I am not discussing here and based on the, those beta call, uh, protocols we can actually classify the polymeric materials at V0, V1, V2 like uh, labels where V0 is the uh, better uh, sample. But in laboratory to find out the flammability there is another test is done which is called limiting oxygen index. So, basically is quantifying the minimum amount of oxygen is required to maintain the flammability. So, in this case oxygen is passed along with nitrogen and within this mixture the burning process is done and when the oxygen amount is very low this burning will not happen. So, slowly the oxygen amount will increase and the minimum amount of oxygen which is required to maintain this burning that is called limiting oxygen index. So, this is basically more versatile small scale testing minimum percentage oxygen required for burning. So, LOI limiting oxygen index is given by the volume of oxygen and volume of oxygen plus volume of nitrogen. So, the higher is the value of LOI that means higher amount of oxygen is required to flame the polymer. So, the, the which means the, the polymer is less flammable if the polymer can burn with low amount of oxygen that means the polymer is more flammable. Some of the values of uh, uh, some polymers LOI value is given here PTFE is requires 95 percent oxygen then that, that means the flammability of poly uh, tetrafluoroethylene is very low. As you can see these are used for um, non-stick uh, coating. So, you can those polymers generally do not burn very quickly. Similarly, oxy polyoxymethylene polyethylene oxide they require very low amount of oxygen to burn. So, these polymers are highly flammable polymer. So, lower is the value of LO, LOI the flammability of the polymers are is high. 
or higher. There are some other additives which helps in processing, fabrication and assembly of polymers and they are like mold release agents which help in releasing uh, the um, polymer from mold or the product from mold, lubricants which affect or help in processing by, by basically uh, if we add lubricant then the polymer can flow through the barrels or uh, easily. And there are other polymer additives which are added during processing or fabrication. I will just give two examples of um, mold release and, and uh, lubricants. Like uh, this is the molecule PETS uh, polytetra uh, ethylene tetraestiarate and this is GMS glycerol monostearate. So, because of this presence of this long hydrophobic chains they actually comes or blot to the interface between the metal mold and the polymer. As a result this actually help releasing the polymer material from mold and they also help in processing of the polymer sample. Similarly, when we add this small molecule of polytetrafluoroethylene, they actually reduce the friction between the metal, um, metal uh, barrel or metal screw and the polymer. So, coefficient of friction comes down as a result the lubrication happens. The other types of additives which are used for um, polymers are like compatibilizers, cross linking agents, nucleating agents, dispersing agents, blowing agents. They have a definite role to play and I am not going to discuss any of this uh, because uh, you know they require a lot of time and effort uh, which is not available for this course. There are significant amount of additives which are surface active agents which means the additives which are added in the polymer they tend to come to the interface between the two phases. Like the example I gave that PETS or the GMS molecules which comes to the mold surface mold the interface between mold and the polymer matrix which helps in releasing the mold from uh, polymers samples from the mold. Similarly, there are other surface active agents which helps in several properties like anti fog which help is in, in basically preventing fogging on polymer samples like polymer film and, and so on. Anti static agent it basically prevents generation of static charge on polymer surface easy clean self clinic this basically prevent uh, or basically help in self cleaning of polymer material. We can add surface active agents to improve hemocompatibility or blood compatibility so that it does not the mm, this sample when comes in polymer sample comes in contact with blood it does not damage or rupture blood cells. Similarly, we can add additives which prevent uh, the polymer or plastic induced uh, coagulation, resistant to lipid addition or adsorption which prevents uh, adsorption or fouling by protein molecules, antimicrobial additives which basically um, add uh, which uh, help in uh, killing the viruses and microbials when come into the into the contact with surface. Anti filing this is like uh, um, very much applied in the marine um, applications where when in contact with water 
this actually prevents uh, fouling of uh, marine plants to grow on the plastic surface and there are other like abrasion resistance, cast resistance, anti-clear, anti-piracy. There are many other properties which are achieved by adding surface active agents in the base polymers. And as I again said that this require dedicated discussion of each of these additives to tell you the mechanism, how does it work and what are the type of additives, what are the chemical structures required for this type of additives which are uh, not possible for um, this lecture. And these surface active reagent agents need to have few common attributes like they should be partially compatible, they should not be soluble or very much miscible so that it does not come to the surface or it should not be at all uh, immiscible so that it does not mix at all with the polymer sample. So, partial compatibility required, low surface energy so that it comes to surface preferably. Thermal, it has to be thermal stable so that it can withstand the processing of the polymer and it should be chemically unreactive, it should not react with the base polymer otherwise it will degrade the properties of the base polymers. These surface active agents can also be used as a compatibilizer between two polymers, two immiscible polymers. When you make a blend of two immiscible polymers, then we can add compatibilizer to compatibilize two immiscible blends or immiscible flame, uh, phases. Similarly, we can use these surface active agents to compatibilize or disperse solid fillers inside polymer matrix. In this case, these agents actually go and sit interface between the polymer sample and the filler and help in dispersing the filler within polymer matrix. There are other fillers are added. Now, there is a difference when we use the term additives and fillers. In case of additives, generally the agent or the additives are added in much lower concentration. For example, typically less than 1 percent or 2 percent additives are added in the base polymers, maximum may be 5 percent. But in case of fillers, these fillers are added in much larger quantity, much higher than the additive molecules. So, just the difference between uh, additives and fillers, additives are added generally added at much lower concentration whereas fillers are generally added at much larger concentration. And there are many types of fillers which are added to improve the performance like clay, glass beads, uh, calcium carbonate, talc, mica and so on. And they are added specifically for improving some performances and I will talk about uh, clays little bit and specifically on nano clays and, and when also we add fillers to the base material, we actually generate a composite. So, when fillers are added to polymers, polymer plus fillers we get polymer composite. So, when we add polymer plus filler, we get polymer composites. And we, when we add nano filler, nano filler that means fillers which have dimension in nano region or nano dimension, then we call those composite as polymer nano composites. So, we now talk about a little bit about this nano filler and nano composites and there are many nano materials which are added to polymer base material to improve their properties like nano clays, nano particles, nano wires or nano fibers, nano tubes, spherical fullerenes, aggregated dead nanometing forms and, and there is a specific role these uh, 
fillers uh, actually take place. For example, when you add this uh, nanotubes, carbon nanotubes, they actually increases electrical conductivity of the base polymer. When you add nanoparticle, they increases uh, several important properties like scatch resistant and so on. So, I will discuss little bit about nanoclays. When you add nanoclays or other in fact nano fillers, there, they generally improve these properties like increases the strength, toughness, HDT, heat distortion temperature, U resistance, barrier properties, thermal and electrical conductivity. But at the same time, by adding these nano fillers, we lose uh, transparency, we lose ductility or elongation at break and also lose thermal stability, especially because of the impurities present in these type of fillers. I will talk about nanoclays as example, nanoclays have this type of layered structures and when they are added in polymer, we, we add some additives along with this or we try to match the, uh, the chemistry between the polymer and the clays so that the polymer chains can go and sit and basically separate this layer. Otherwise, unless we can separate this layer and disperse this clay layer, then we will not get the improvement in properties. So, this is a intercalated nano composite and this is exfoliated nano composite where the layers are separated and dispersed in the polymer matrix. And one example like if we have a situation like this and if gases wants to pass through this polymer matrix, then they will come and get resistant from this uh, this uh, uh, nanoclays. So, if one gas wants to pass through this, then they will stop here, then they has to take this another length and, and they has to take a longer path to pass through this uh, polymer matrix. Hence, it is expected to increase the barrier property of the base polymer. So, it increases modulus because this has higher modulus, inorganic substances have much higher modulus than the polymeric substances. It also increases tensile strength as I described that because of this it creates torturous paths for the gases to move, increases the barrier property is also help in increasing or improving the fire retardant performance of the base polymer. But drawback is that it decreases the transparency and this decreases the ductility. So, maintaining modulus, uh, maintaining the ductility or elongation and increasing modulus is a challenge or in otherwise creating a high modulus ductile polymer example is remains a challenge. So, with this I will uh, stop this class and I will talk about blends a uh, little bit in the next class.